This is 1017 CHLY. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday and the Chronic Wellness Radio Show. I'm your host, Sandra Silva, and I'll be spending the next hour with you here in the studios of CHLY. This show is called Chronic Wellness, and chronic, by definition, is something that is ongoing or constantly reoccurring. Ongoing and reoccurring wellness is something that we all desire, and it's my goal to bring you ideas, techniques, interviews, and inspiration to do just that. Give you the tools you need to live an empowered, thriving life. On today's program, we are going to be looking at how to protect our energy from being depleted by burnout and exhaustion. Does anyone ever experience feelings of burnout or exhaustion? Far too many of us are feeling burnout from the hectic pace and busy lives we lead, and for some, it's become their way of life. Continually burning the candles at both ends. I know so many people that do that. Over time, this behavior has the chance of impacting our health and not in a good way. Today, we are going to talk about identifying where you are right now as far as burnout and what you can do to make some small shifts to turn fatigue and overwhelm into energy. Let's get started. This is Chronic Wellness. My guest today is Dr. Sandra Lewis, a personal energy strategist and author of Life in Four-Part Harmony, Get Everything in Your Life to Work with Everything Else in Your Life. She works with and serves women professionals who want to recover from or prevent stress by transforming the draining energy into an energy that's more aligned and enables us to thrive. As a clinical psychologist, yoga teacher, and Qigong practitioner with years of clinical teaching and consulting experience, Dr. Sandra helps women connect to their inner power source and create a daily rhythm that works for them. Welcome to Chronic Wellness, Dr. Sandra Lewis. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Thank you so very much for having me today. Fantastic. I'm so glad for you to be joining me today and that technology worked in our favor and we've got everything working and live on the air. Um, The work that you do is so fascinating to me because it's also so much needed because many of us experience a cycle of burnout that just tends to repeat. Yes, for sure. I... um it's interesting that you say this because just in the past few weeks talking with women, one of the things you hear is how people almost will back themselves into a corner. They almost feel, and and some do feel guilty about taking a moment to pause, a moment to slow it all down so that they can gather themselves and actually be more effective. So it's, quite an interesting conundrum that we put ourselves in when we want to excel and do well, but we don't allow ourselves the time, the space to actually have what we need to bring our best to those moments that matter so much to us. That's so true. And, and it's, it's like we're rewarded to do the opposite. We're rewarded Mm -hmm. to push. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's everywhere. Mm hmm. Yeah, there is definitely a reward for push. And I think sometimes, too, I come across people who are, you know, they've always been the person who did well. They excelled at things. They, and they, they've always done it by just moving, continually moving, and they don't really know another way. And I think that works for a little while. <laughs> then after some time, a period of doing that, then you kind of wear yourself down because there's no recovery. That's right. If you recover, you know, somewhere in, in that picture, then you can keep moving. But if you just keep pushing, then you find that you kind of run out of energy and you, you feel drained and even just disconnect from what you're doing. 
That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love about the work that you do is how you bring together a blend of evidence-based methods as a psychologist and ancient wisdom and wellness traditions. Can you tell me a little bit about that, how those work well together? Yes. Um, I, I think it's interesting, too, that one of the things we're saying is mindfulness, which is a very ancient kind of, has some connections to Buddhism, now has quite a bit of research support to it. So it's interesting that East and West are coming together. The same thing you can see with, like, ac- think, uh, acupuncture and Qigong, uh, you see some now you start to see people in Western settings beginning to look at, well, how do people change once we add these particular methods for supporting wellness into their lives? So from my perspective, though, I see them as parts, as, as, as not in com- competition with each other. I see them as actually quite complementary. So I can teach someone very well-known cognitive behavioral techniques for shifting yourself out of kind of a negative thought pattern to help you get yourself on track and behave differently because we know when we change our thoughts, our emotions and our behavior will also change. And I can help you stay in that pattern. I can help you nurture yourself in that pattern by actually helping you tune in to yourself at a deeper level with something like mindfulness and meditation. Mm Mm-hmm. Or if you were in a Qigong class with me teaching you movements that help you to bring yourself back to center when you begin to feel anxious or overwhelmed. So they work so well together. There's no no reason for us to feel like we can only do things that have been demonstrated by Western research standards because other traditions have different ways of knowing. And when you put it all together and you start to see your life change, you start to see, feel yourself change, then you feel like, oh, wait a minute, I can actually expand what works for me. You have just more tools in your tool belt. Absolutely. And I love how, um, you know, when you combine, like you said, the different, um, the different ways, it's like bringing together a delicious meal or recipe. Mm-hmm. It needs more than one layer and one component. And yeah. when it comes to our wellness um, I I love that more of the um, the holistic sides are are like you said they're ancient they've been around forever but they're becoming more respected and people are saying like hey yeah I I need that I want that. Mhm mhm. One of the things I I I would say that um, we hear people talk a lot more about now in part because of Simon Sinek's book um, Start with Why. Mm-hmm. You hear people talk, uh, and it's not, you know, in, in, in let's say in the business world, we hear people talk about this why that you have that is the value behind your business, and that's what gets people to tune into you. What's interesting to me about that is if you look at ancient t- traditions like Taoism that say we're, we are reflections of nature or we are part of nature, we are part of this really big picture. And when you tune into yourself as a part of this big picture, you understand that you have purpose. Uh, if we were in an African tradition, when a child is born, there are rituals done to say, well, who is this spirit? Because before you're physical, your energy, right? Mm-hmm. So who is this energy coming in this now this physical body to do something purposeful in the world? We also know from, like, in psychology from Viktor Frankl's work and and just years and years of work on purpose that when people have a sense of purpose, they move in a different way in the world. They move through their challenges in a different way. So here we have these very ancient traditions that all have been for for eons saying that purpose matters. And, And we now also see we see that Western researchers and Western thinkers are saying the same kind of thing. This why you have, this value that drives everything really matters. If you can get into that, if you can connect to that and help people connect to that with you, then you can actually work in in your flow and you can connect to other people in a flow that helps them to expand as well. I love that so much. And it's, um, you know, finding finding your purpose, finding your why. Um, not only does that bring 
a higher sense of satisfaction to what we're doing throughout the day. Um, like you say, it, there's, there's more flow. It feels easier. And mm-hmm. that is also um, of benefit to us on a cellular level. It's our body's not not fighting against. It's it's joyful. Things are things happen easier. Um, it's something that. Um, and it, and yeah, you're right. It's now it's now I see a lot of people um, in business trainings trying to introduce mm-hmm. this as a new concept when mm-hmm. it's not new at all. No, it's quite ancient, quite old, but quite valuable. It's never lost its value. <laughs> so when we are um, when we're when we're practicing that and and everything is 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 working working well, that is um, that really helps. But if we don't if we're not sort of in alignment with what um, what we feel is our purpose and that's igniting our passion, I've heard you say that we can often disconnect from mm-hmm. our bodies and lose our either in, inner rhythm that help us yes. make decisions. Mm-hmm. That is one of the biggest challenges with getting into a lifestyle where we are simply involved in doing. I'm doing it. I just got to get it done. I'm doing it. I'm just, I just have to get it done. And so when we get to that place, we don't even really hear our bodies talking to us about, okay, yes, you can get it done, but right now you really need to get some water or you really need food. It would be better if you slept right now because if you slept right now, we could recover. And there's this great idea that's about to be born in your mind, but you, you're too tired to hear it. So we get into this pattern. It's interesting. I talked to a woman just a few weeks ago who said that she loves her career. And I've talked to more than one person who said this, but I just she stands out in my mind right now. And it's a new career, one that she started, you know, at a later time in life and loved it so much, but then started to feel overwhelmed by all the things and that she had to do. And she found herself just going through the motions. Okay, I just have to get it done. I just have to get it done. And and when you're in that state, now you've actually even lost your joy for it. So you don't have your flow anymore. And you're just pushing to do it. So you're absolutely not listening to your body. Mm -hmm. You don't even hear. I I talked to another woman um, who said she got so burned out that she lost her ability to recognize her own hunger. Mm -hmm. She couldn't hear her body saying, I need food, right? She she just squelched it so many times that her body literally almost, she stopped being able to hear the signals. But the truth about that, those where we stop losing the, we lose touch, we disconnect from ourselves, that's actually one of the things that mindfulness can help us with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can re it's so it's one of the most powerful techniques for helping us reconnect to those body messages the way our sensations speak to us and help us to know when we're starting to get on the edge of the stress scale like we're we're coming to the edge and say oh even before we get to the edge like this is what it looks like when i'm beginning to get to a point that it's not quite manageable and we as adults tend to push that stuff aside. I mean, think of when you're looking after a young child or an infant, you watch for the signs. Oh, I mm-hmm. think there's, you know, it's time to time for food, time for rest. And mm-hmm. yet when we, when we get in caught up in our adult lives, we forget that it has, um, re, you know, the side of you just going through the motions and stuff at work. I, I can recall when I was so fully entrenched with um, my corporate job and my huge commute and everything that I had to do, Finally, at a point, I became so ill physically that I needed to take a medical leave. But mm-hmm. I felt so much guilt and shame for having to yeah. do that. I felt like mm-hmm. I had not that my I wasn't cognizant enough at the time to say, whoa, Sandra, wake up call. You need to take care of your health. Mm-hmm. It was I'm letting this company down. I'm not yeah. able to. And that's. I, you know that that's it, it's the it, the type of feelings that we put towards that they they sort of permeate to how we feel about everything, right? And that experience is not uncommon. That experience of oh my, I've let this company down. Oh my, people are going to look at me and think I'm slacking. Mm-hmm. And we 
we come to value the getting a thing done so much more than the big picture. It's like at that point, we've even lost touch with what the company values are. Like, what is this company going for? What is the difference they're trying to make in their clients' lives? What are they trying to add to the world? Because we've just gotten focused on the one little thing or the things that we have to make happen. We don't even see the big picture anymore. And we're just drilling down and drilling ourselves into the ground trying to make that thing happen. But the big picture is gone. And then we don't even realize that we've lost the big picture until we feel like now we're letting people down. So true. So true. And so mm-hmm. talking about the big picture and that there's, you know, we're on, we only focus on on one part of it. I'd like to talk about your concept of life in four part four part harmony. And yeah. you actually wrote a, a book with that uh, on that subject. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So here is again where my ancient my ancient side, my ancient wisdom side comes together with my evidence-based side. So in ancient um, Egypt, or called Kemet at the time, there was literally, in their understanding of the cosmos, in their understanding of the universe, there was a force that they call Ma'at, which which was a feminine force that was responsible, a force of nature that was responsible for keeping everything in relationship to everything else. That literally... An energy force kept the sun in relationship to the earth and the stars in relationship, all these things, the planet, everything was in re- because of this energy force that was helping everything hold its place and create some order. And it, just similar to Taoism, the same thing is that as you see above working in the universe, so we will also want to create in the earth. So this this force of Ma'at was also about how do people create this harmony in their lives. First, there's a kind of understanding that everybody has a truth. You want to be honest in, in your integrity and respect this order and recognize that everybody is a part of this order. And if you do that, if everything works in relationship to everything else, you create this harmony. So as I looked at these principles, and literally that was the leader's jobs, they, they were actually charged with helping people think, well, how do you translate this idea of what's happening in the universe, this ma'at, into your everyday life? So there are concepts like truth, order, balance, reciprocity, harmony, justice, fairness. Those are all principles that are associated with ma'at. When I was looking at it, I had this idea. I said, well, you know, if you practice truth, order, balance and reciprocity, those things coming together could create harmony in your life. And then I learned about personal energy management. And I was like, oh, literally, it clicked for me that Ma'at, an energy force, right, shows us that it takes energy for everything to work together. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, God, that's so true, because if you have no energy, if your mind is unfocused, if your emotions are going all over the place, if your energy is scattered, you can't keep order. So that's how I came up with Life in Four-Part Harmony, by looking at how literally how this ancient philosophy that wasn't just a science, but it was a life philosophy and also a lifestyle practice, and how we could take that and help us to build the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy we need to create harmony in our lives every day. And that harmony for for me means that you are aligned with your values. You are clear in the steps you are taking to manifest and to make put those values into action, to feel focused. And you... Or know how to use your resources. You're not overdoing or under, and that's really what balance is to me. And you recognize your connection to life and to people around you, that that connection, your connection to them, they're as important to you as you are to them. So that's how I actually came up with that and started to put it into a framework that people could use to literally think how to energize their mind, body, and spirit each day. I really love how you talk about this concept and this practice as finding harmony as opposed to the phrase that everyone's familiar with, I'm trying to achieve a work-life balance, Mm -hmm. right? Because it's the, the balance 
is not really what we're looking for. I really, the concept of finding harmony and through through things in, in connections, why is it, why should we not be looking for a balance? Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because one of the concepts for me is balance, but I don't think of balance as, as I, as I watched, I watch, as I read the ancient text and I, I, I read the, the, discussion of my art and how my art works in the universe. My understanding of balance is that there is a sense of knowing how to moderate one thing and another thing. So you know how to use your energy wisely when you need your resources on this side versus that side or, or over there versus over here. So balance to me isn't really about us having sort of a 50-50, because who, who would want their work to be 50% of their lives? Mm-hmm. I think work-life balance originally was about working in a way that does not overshadow the rest of your life, but somehow we lost, we lost touch with, the, with that, and we started thinking of my work and the rest of my life. There's just no way you can have your work be half of everything that you do. Mm-hmm. But you can come to an understanding of balance as this ability to think about all the parts of your life and where you need to prioritize, where you need to put your energy. Uh, I, I'm thinking of an example. I was I gave uh, I work uh, gave a presentation on being overwhelmed and how to manage that to a group of women, and some were moms, and they were like, "Oh, now school's out, but I still have all these work responsibilities." And that's true. When school's out now you may have to have more mom time and you may have to have more intern time in your workplace. You might have to have someone to come and help you because you, you have to have more mom time now. That's really what balance is. It's this ability for us to sort of begin to modulate and moderate and determine where we need to put our focus at any point in time. And if we do that in alignment with what we value, then we create this harmony. That's the key. The yeah. finding, you know, finding what have what we value mm-hmm. drive where we put our energies. And like you say, recognizing when there's going to be different seasons, whether you're like in the example of something going on with children or you're doing, you know, you're launching a, a new business or something mm-hmm. being able. It's uh, flexible and, and fluid, but tying being recognizing what it is that you value, being really clear on that and then building things within that of, of uh, and, and, and talk to me a little bit about how order brings like a rhythm and how that's beneficial to us. Mm, yes. Yeah. So this is interesting too, because I was talking to a friend who was an entrepreneur who said, who said like, I've just resisted this whole thing of like setting up these schedules and having this, like, and I was like, but think about it this way, right? It's like the same thing when you're on a dance floor, and you know the steps to salsa or you know the steps to whatever dance you're doing, you can get into a flow because you know how this leads to this and this leads to that and that leads to the next. When you have that, then you, you, you can float. And even if something goes slightly out, right, you have to say, oh, I have to go over here. I can't go this straight way. I'm going to have to go around. Because you have a sense of how things work together, you can find this rhythm. Same thing you see when you you might watch um, soldiers marching. And when they march and move in unison or you watch people doing synchronized swim, just think, think about there. there's this whole kind of we know what comes next so we can create this rhythm together. Mm-hmm. So for me, order at its best is when it gives you this, sense that, okay, I'm in my flow now. And I know this is one of the things I know as being also a college professor is that we are we have a, a schedule that is pretty much the same for about 10 months or so a year. But then in two months, your schedule is different. You're setting it up however you want to set it up, and, and some things are now out of the way, out of the schedule. But when you go back to September, you have to reset again. You have to find that rhythm again. So, and like school kids, right? <laughs> school kids, summer is kind of free and flowing, and you, we, okay, well, today we're doing this, right? But when you go back, then you have to now find out, okay, this and this. And once you have that, 
And it usually takes me about three weeks to say, okay, I'm in a good rhythm. Okay, this feels like this is in the right place. This feels, okay, that feels good to me. And then even with you have an order, everybody, even if you were to watch people do salsa, everybody still has their own flair. Mm -hmm. So you can create the order that flair is right for you. You don't, it doesn't have to be like an order that doesn't, it should feel right. Once it feels right to you, you have a rhythm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, and having a rhythm, and having things that that feel feel good, um, it just it it makes things easier. I find that when I'm in a state of um, having some more rhythm and order to my day, that I'm also reaping benefits of being more creative, um, mm-hmm. being more finding more things, you know, recognizing more things to be gra- grateful for, and things like that. And but mm-hmm. it, it's uh, so I I like the way that that. Um, that structure can actually be more freeing. And what you just said reminds me of how, and that's so like when you, when you have this order, when you create this order for yourself and you say, okay, that looks like, and you feel it, then you, you notice that you have more creativity, which says your mental energy now is flowing. Mm -hmm. You notice that you're more grateful. Your emotional energy is flowing. You're noticing your connection to things around you. Your spiritual energy is flowing. Your body probably also feels a lot more relaxed. So your physical energy is flowing. So these, these practices can help you to feel like, yes, I have my flow and I have what I need to bring to each, each moment that I'm in. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I think that that's, uh, you know, that's something that is we can we can learn to do this just because we're in a situation where we're not feeling that we have truth order balance and reciprocity currently we can we can pause we can we can Mm -hmm. learn we can we can um you know if there's a desire for that um it's something that can people can learn how to do yeah it's i i I think for me that's one of the best parts about being a psychologist because, of course, one of the biggest theories in psychology is learning theory. And there's various perspectives, but the idea is that we can learn things. And if you you study cognitive behavioral theories, you'll see that so many of the skills that we find are valuable that some people do very naturally can be taught. The first thing that comes to my mind right now is optimism. Martin Seligman's work, he started out looking at um, doing his research with animals in a lab and discovered something that he called learned helplessness. So he studied pessimism for a while. But then he also began to see that people had this other way of being where when they were more optimistic, they actually were more effective in their jobs. So then he switched, he started looking at optimism and since then has created uh, you know, programs, you know, to help children who are sometimes really depressed and sad have more optimism. So this this ability that we have as human beings to learn things, oh, man, I think it's a superpower. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. Um, so, Sandra, as we are recording this today, it is... Um, we're gearing up towards the last two months of the year, and I wanted to talk a little bit about your program, Finish the Year Strong, because mm-hmm. I'm doing something similar with a, um, a last 90 days challenge where, you know, focusing intention and energy to, the, to, to end off the year. So you did one, um, did you do this at the beginning of the, of the recent Equinox? Yes, I did this one. Uh, somehow last year I had this awareness that the September equinox marks 100 days left in the year. It's usually right about that time. And I thought, well, how great is that? Here's nature going through this big alignment thing that shows us, like, when you come into alignment, you can have equal day and night, like literally. And, wow, look, there's so many lessons here. We're also entering the fall season when there's a harvest time which means all this energy we've invested over the last nine months, we can now start to harvest it into something. So it's, it's the perfect time, I think, of year. People start thinking of it as the end, but it's really, to me, the perfect time of year to say, wait a minute, here's like a groundswell of energy that I can use to get some momentum to finish something, feel good about it, and take that with me into the next year. Absolutely. So we, we did five nights. 
And the first night was really focused on helping people get that momentum. Like, what is it that you want to accomplish? Really choose one thing because, you know, we don't want to be overwhelmed. We want to choose one thing. And then the next few nights, I really took them through a set of steps to help them know how to listen to their body so that they're not pushing to get the thing done to figure out how to support their bodies because depending upon your goal, like if you're working on a weight loss goal, how will you support your body to, to help your body be able to do that? If you're working on a project like creating something new or even some people were just working on, they wanted to explore something, they weren't sure. They're thinking they want to make a change, but they don't know what it is yet, but they need to dedicate the time to actually exploring what that is. So each night we focused on how your how to use your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy to help you create what you want to create. And that last night when we talk about spiritual energy, it's where we begin to reconnect what they're doing to their values. We start with that when we talk about alignment the first night, but that last night we really do focus on who do you see yourself, you know, what is it that you see yourself as bringing to the world, what are your gifts, and how do you see this project that's connected to that? Because even if you have a goal of releasing 10 pounds, you then are saying that you want your body to be really ready and prepared because there's this work that you want to do in the world. So you can connect any goal. If you can connect it to who you see yourself to be in the world, it makes it so much easier to do. And if you can fall in love with it, we actually talked about this quote I love uh, from a book called Power by Feel, which is about how when people fall in love with their work, it doesn't even feel like work anymore. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the strategies we sh- I shared with them is how do you begin to see why you love this thing and what, what love you bring to it and what love it brings to you. So there are, if my math is correct, 65 days left in 2019. Mm-hmm. So as people are, and it's not too late, we don't, you don't need to have 100 days or 90 days. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk about getting that mindset and that focus mm-hmm. for the for the last 65 days of the year. I yeah. really I'm I mean some of the things like connecting connecting your goal to your values and who, mm-hmm. what you're supposed to what your purpose is. To me that seems mm-hmm. really powerful. Mhm. Uh, and it's interesting you say that because what I agreed to do with the women who signed up for the program was uh to and this was a free master class. So I've been about at 75 days, I sent them a reminder with some tips to help them. And then I'll do it again at 60 days, which I guess literally will be in a couple of days from now, right? Mm -hmm. So that to say, listen, what you want is important and you want to just be able to keep it in front of you, but you want to keep it in front of you in a way that allows you to bring your best to it. So, And that's where I am is without the overwhelm, without but with your full ability to focus and to be connected to it. So one of the main ideas is, is, as you said, is when you have a goal, start with why. You know, is, is Simon Sinek's words, mm-hmm. is begin to think about why that thing is important to you, what it aligns within you. It could be a value you have for family or for love or for a, a sense of accomplishment But whatever that value is, if you get really, really clear about how that goal fits for you, then when you have those down times, when it's like, oh, God, this thing is getting really hard, I thought I was going to be able to go this way, and now I'm going to have to go that way, then you can still come back to the fuel because Mm -hmm. the, the, the value you have, the value that it connects to is fuel. So when it's really important to you, when it's a deep value, then you can find, okay, all right, it looks a little cloudy, not quite the way I wanted to do it, but there's still a way for me to move. There's still a way for me to get there. And, and, you, and you can stay with it. I think the other part of it that I would say and that I've been trying to remind women of who were in the program is how you are thinking about the goal each day. What are you saying to yourself about it? Mm-hmm. What is the dialogue that you're having with yourself about it? Is this a worried, oh, my God, I don't think this is going to happen dialogue, or is this a, okay, I might have to slow down, or, but, hey, I'm getting some progress. So at some point 
in this process. Literally, you want to be able to often say to yourself, hey, this is what I've accomplished on my goal. This is how far I've gotten. And this gets me to here. Now that now that I've gotten here, I can see that I can get here too. So this, this kind of little bit of rewards, this celebrations along the way are so important, so important. And I think part of that is because if you have a goal that you can really see a big picture, you can see what it looks like and you're and it looks far away, those little steps along the way and those little celebrations help you to remember that you're getting closer. Mm-hmm. So important. I think that um, I've done I've done a little bit of work in in identifying the why of what you're you know you're speaking of. It's like why why am I doing a particular thing? Why am I showing up? Why am I taking on a new goal or challenge? And I know that some people have sometimes said that they have difficulty in sort of capturing um, what that why is and. I recommend that people keep revisiting it. And Mm -hmm. when you find and go a little deeper and allow yourself to be vulnerable, allow yourself to dream. And Mm -hmm. when you circle, when you actually find your why, it usually has an emotional response. Like you feel it physically as well. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. So um, what kind of, um, what's a good place for someone to, to start to, um, get things in in alignment with their with their why and their goals attached to their values and is that um, what how can people get help with that? I I agree with you, Sandra. That people often think of it, it they feel challenged when you ask them that question. That what value does it, does it attach to? Because we often don't think about that. We we go and we have a knowledge of it, but we don't go deeply. And I would say we can keep this easy because when you go throughout your day, you can begin by simply noticing in your life what are the things that bring you joy. What are the things you crave that bring you joy? And then ask yourself, why is that thing important to me? Does it, what does it affirm for me? What does it awaken in me? And then you slowly begin to create these value words that help you to see Oh, that's about integrity. I value integrity. That's about um, support. I value support. That's about family. I value family. I value integration. Some people value challenge. Okay, this is going to help me to grow. That's another value. So as we begin to just slowly look, just take advantage of what's happening to you each day when you're walking on the, and you're walking through a park and you just notice how much you love walking through the park, what is it that you value there? Maybe there's something about the clarity of it. Maybe there's something about connection, connection to the world around you and realizing that as you are exhaling, you know, the CO2 that you don't need, the trees are exhaling oxygen and giving back to you as you're giving to them. So there is this maybe a value for reciprocity. So your everyday experiences can begin to teach you exactly what you love. It just means we have to stop and listen. We have to stop and look. That's where I I think sometimes the challenge comes. And I think people have it um, completely flipped upside down. They concentrate and are very clear on the things that they don't love and the things mm-hmm. that are, you, you know, ir- irritants or taking up their time. But developing the skill set and the mindset to be able to turn turn that around can make such um, such big changes. And actually, no, it's, it's not big changes, but it's small shifts over time. Are, do end up making thing making more significant changes. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes. So that's why the small wins are so important. Because every time we celebrate a small win, and then we eventually get to the big one, we're like, "Wow, look how much good stuff has happened that got me here. Mm-hmm. Look at all these little things that I did." So then we become so much more appreciative of each step we're taking. It it makes it. It's easier for us to stay out of this, like, feeling we have to, have to push to drive through because we can see what progress looks like for us. So you're, um, you're a 
personal energy strategist. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of what we've been talking about, learning how to be aware and and harness your power and use your energy. And I mean, it's it's a, a, a nice area to be able to help with people because I'm sure you can see some pretty amazing results when people do the work. Yeah. When you, and, and I think here, the beauty is that when you, when you, when you get past the point of thinking that your, your, your energy is simply your, your physical body feeling like ready to run and mm-hmm. realizing that your energy is also your ability to focus, to be creative, as you just talked about, how to actually listen to your emotions. You know, one of the, you know, one of the buzzwords, some people call it a buzzword, but one of the concepts that has been around now probably 40 years plus is this idea of your emotional intelligence, that your emotions are signals, your thoughts are signals. That's something that psychologists have talked about for a long time. And, of course, we know that that exists in other traditions as well. But when we start to expand our understanding of what our energy is, and like I talk to my students um, when I do talk about motivation and I ask them, so what is it? What is this thing? Most of them say you use the word push. There's a push to do something. And I say, okay, so that push is something you feel inside, that energy, that drive that you want. So when, when we get to this place of expanding our idea of what energy is, then we, we have a way of being more holistic about cultivating it in our lives, about saying, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not thinking straight. I'm not thinking straight. Like my body might be kind of feeling okay or my, I might not, I'm, I'm not thinking straight. So maybe I need to kind of do something to get out of this brain fog, All right? I can sit up here, but I'm kind of in a brain fog. Mm-hmm. So I might need to shift my environment. So I actually might need to get up and move my body so that I can shift my, my mind. Um, So I think it's this, if we can expand our idea of what energy is and recognize that we have to take care of ourselves beyond, you know, eating and sleeping well, that we can have more to bring to each moment. We can have more, and we have just a deeper understanding of us and our needs, our basic needs. It comes down to simple things sometimes, like I know that I'm better at certain tasks early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like if you ask me to do certain things in the evening, that's not the best time for me. However, if I knew that I had to do something in the evening that I'm not usually good at, what I would do is think about what would I have to do in the afternoon to have myself be ready for that in the evening. You understand what I'm saying? Totally. And mm-hmm. being, I mean, the awareness is the, is like the first step right knowing and then Mm -hmm. making making the choices like we've said that align with what you value most and um that's kind of like the 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 recipe right there so you are being gracious and offering all our listeners whether you're listening to us live or on the replay of a complimentary gift which is a um a three-step formula to change the fatigue into energy. So yes. can you tell us about that? So here's the thing, right? When we get overwhelmed and fatigued, the first thing we do is we just kind of, we, we get into this spiral, right? So this, this formula is really about helping us figure out how do we get out of that spiral in three simple steps and change, right? Shift our energy. But in order to make that happen, we have to know sometimes the things that that get us out, right, that throw us off. Mm -hmm. So it includes, the free gift includes a checklist. Do any of these things sound like you? And if there's just one or two things, you can begin to think about how to shift, right? So there's some guidance about you can begin to think about how to shift. But if you have a lot of those things, you're welcome. You could talk to me or to someone to help you begin to at least think of one thing you could do to start to shift yourself out of that overwhelm or that exhaustion. It could be emotional or physical. I find that for me, if I'm physically tired, physically exhausted, I could go to sleep and I'll feel better. But emotional exhaustion or mental exhaustion Mm -hmm. require a little bit more help. 
I, I don't just I can't just sleep those off. No, I gotta, that's, that's now true. I'm going to need some new strategies to work on those. But it's all about helping us begin to take that one shift that's going to get us back on track. And hopefully in the future begin to create our lives and create, create our order and our rhythm in a way that sustains us so that we're not constantly draining ourselves and then trying to come back up. So people don't have to have their entire life circumstances change in order to deal with burnout. They need to learn some skills in some ways to better manage that within the context of where they're at. Right. And I think, I think you know that. I think we both, both of us have experience being burned out and uh, you had a medical, you had to, a med- you took a medical leave. Mm-hmm. I've also taken a leave and I was just like, oh God, this has gotten to be way too much. I can't even, I can't function well here. So we know, right? And so I had to go back and I had to regroup and figure out how do I live my life in a way that I'm nurtured, Mm -hmm. that I'm thriving, that I'm actually able to accomplish what matters to me. So I had to get back to what really does matter to me and how I begin to recreate that. So it takes us some time sometimes to really create that. But this is our whole life we're building. We're not racing a clock. Mm -hmm. We're building a life. And I think that's um, that's something that is becoming something that more people more people value is to building that life. I mean, I really like the all of the um, and the connections that we have with with others, with our communities, with our with our um, how we're feeling mentally, emotionally, and physically, and tying it all into in together. It's um, so, so if someone's feeling you know, that, um, that state of, of overwhelm and they're just never feeling that they're ahead of the game and what's a vacation and what's downtime and, and all of that kind of stuff. It's the form, the formula, the three-step formula kind of just, it's like, okay, well take a look at this and maybe you Mm -hmm. get some clarity on seeing that maybe some small shifts or some small changes are achievable. I think that's how the checklist can often help people. Like you look and you see, oh, right, this might be one of the places where I can start to make a shift. This might be what, what seems to be the most pressing issue for you. And is this a place where you can start to do something that will create some change? It's small shifts that make big changes. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's easy. Um, they're easy to do. Don't, uh, mm-hmm. I don't want people to think that, um, well, you know, I don't have time for that, or wouldn't it be nice? Mm-hmm. Because really, it's um, it, these are these are things that can can make a difference. And we talked about it before. It's like a um, a domino effect. You mm-hmm. have success in one things, and yes, celebrate those successes. Acknowledge, um, you know, what you're what you're doing, and 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 think about how you're feeling in your body mm-hmm. as well. How do you feel about about things? So it's um, no, it's found it's fantastic work that you do. Um, I've put the, um, on my Facebook page right now, I've put up the link that people can go to and you'll just click on that. It'll take you right to Dr. Sandra's, um, page where she, um, where she has her offer to get your, um, you get your three-step formula. Like we talked about, there's the checklist in there and, um, and then there's, uh, there's other, other, um, other things that you also offer as well, like a, a free um, burnout breakthrough session um, that yep. people can do. What's, yep. what's, what is that? And so that is where we actually look at your checklist and we say, okay, let's see where you are. Did you end up in a place where it seems like, okay, this is pretty manageable, you can, might be able to handle, or are you in a place where you really feel like, if I don't do something soon, I'm going to be over the edge and probably having to take a leave or I'm going to be just feeling over the edge and I won't be able to get things done. And then I'll be even worse because I'll be worried that I've missed all these things. And my goal in that session with you is to help you at least get your first individualized step, your first individualized plan for getting out of that, right, for ship, making a shift. And then down the road, creating a plan that sustains you over time. 
That sounds fantastic. And again, everyone, this is um, this is free for you. Just go to my Facebook page, Chronic Wellness Essentials, or track me down some other way. This is um, it, this is available internationally. Um, we're mm-hmm. here in Canada at the radio station. You're in the U.S. And mm-hmm. this is done. Um, you receive uh, uh, um, electronically, and you book your sessions. It's um, You've made it really easy for people to get in touch with you and get uh, um, get that, like you say, the first the first step, um, the first yeah. step of finding um, being able to break through a cycle of always being burnt out. And and we all know that if we're if we're always burnt out, it's not only an unpleasant way to be, but that's we're going to end up getting sick because our immune system is right. going to go down and all of that kind of stuff. Um, right. This has been a really, really insightful conversation. I so appreciate you taking the time. What, um, w- any final thoughts for our listeners? I want to just say thank you to you for sure for having me today. And to say to the listeners that we all go through these periods of feeling like we're doing too much and going too fast. And it's that just hear those signals. Hear those signals and reach for help and just listen to those, the two of us who've been there and said, hey, I need help, reached out and got it, and we're able to turn our lives around. The beauty, the beauty of it, too, is that oftentimes those places that challenge us are the places also where we find some more deep value in ourselves. Yes. They move us to a place of expressing ourselves in a whole new way, our creativity in a new way, and adding value to, to the world in the way that we might not have even thought about or just even improving the value that we already add to the world. So I am here to serve and feel free to reach out to me. Awesome. Where do people find you? I am at lifeinfourpartharmony.com and when you download the free gift you will see my contact information there and you can click to schedule your session it'll be perfect it'll be perfect (laughs) thank you so much um i can't wait till the next time we have a chance to have a, a conversation and it's been it's been a great pleasure thank you so much to dr sandra lewis for coming on chronic wellness today it, uh, stay tuned. I will be right back with two additional ways that you can protect yourself or recover from overwhelm. Today, we've been talking about recognizing burnout and more importantly, ways to get out from under it. Um, that was so great listening to Dr. Sandra Lewis. Please do take her up on that uh, on that free gift that she's offering you to get an insight on where you might be within burnout for yourself and um three steps on how to get out from under it and feel feel better it is something that is so important for all of us and whether we're talking about it as burnout or stress or overwhelm you know I recently read read an article on LinkedIn that suggested that self-care is not something to be done occasionally but it is a practice and truer words could not have been spoken. Taking care of ourselves is not something that we should be doing only when we're feeling burnt out or run down, but it is something that we should be doing always. Taking care of ourselves, looking out for our needs, paying attention. Now, this doesn't mean that we're living a tranquil and zen life. And in fact, one of the things that is really great is that there can still be times when we're going through hectic seasons or challenging times. And it's not about shielding ourselves from the stress in our life. It's about having the, st- the tools and strategies that support rather than detour from our well-being. So what does that look like for me? Well, it means that I build in healthy habits throughout my day to check in where I'm at and to recalibrate when needed. When we have more awareness, it allows us to be more proactive with self-care to begin with and just gives us the ability to recover more quickly if the pendulum swings too far in the opposite direction. Using plant medicine from essential oils is such an effective way to support our emotional wellness naturally and it pairs beautifully with a mindfulness approach or practice. 
oils, when used aromatically, work directly with the limbic portion of our brains. And this is where our emotions, moods, and things like our heart rate and blood pressure are regulated. So using a calming, grounding plant essence can help by allowing us to process feelings of stress or overwhelm and bring us back to a state of being more grounded, calm, and in control. It is my secret weapon for wellness. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It is always a pleasure to spend the hour with you here. And remember, go and get your free gift from Dr. Sandra Lewis. It's her three-step formula to change fatigue back into energy and gives you that checklist to see where you are on the burnout scale. Um, Hop on over to my Facebook page. It's up there right now. You'll see the image and uh, the link. That's over at Chronic Wellness Essentials. You have been listening to Chronic Wellness, part of Wellness Wednesdays here on CHLY. Thank you for sharing your time with me. We hope that you found value in today's program. And if you would like any more information on anything you've heard today, please reach out. My name is Sandra Sova, and I will be back in two weeks for another hour of inspiration, conversation, and how to show up for your thriving, empowered life. Take care, everyone. Have a fabulous week, and may we all be chronically well.